Hey, what's up guys? Axis here, back again with a new hero for Gunfire, finally. Been looking forward to this. This new character looks awesome. Very, very excited to get into this. So I'm going to go ahead and do a basic overview of the character for you guys today. Uh, just kind of go over the uh, the skills, the ascensions, the talents, that kind of thing. And then at the end, I'll go over a couple of the ascensions that I think would go well together to make certain little builds out of them. And then... From there, I'm going to try to do a gameplay run-through build using some of the builds that I actually have tried to come up with here. Um, so hopefully they work out well, and let's get over to the character overview. All right, so here is our new hero. Name is Tao, got the first female character in Gunfire. She's actually super, super cool. She's a sword controlling... Uh, flower petal exploding rabbit, I guess? <laughs> I'm not too sure. Uh, she's actually really, really cool. I did do a couple runs with her just to kind of mess around with some stuff to, to see where I think the builds are going to work out well with her. Um, as far as her skills, she's got, of course, a primary, secondary, how uh, everybody else does. Uh, her primary is called Swords Out. You essentially just shoot forward a whole bunch of swords uh, in front of you that do 300 damage each. Uh, the amount of swords is determined by the stacks of your blade heart. Blade heart is a stack that you earn by essentially shooting or using ammo. You don't have to hit anything, just spending ammo. Um, so every 15 anima ammo that you consume, you gain one stack of blade heart. You can get up to six stacks to begin with. You can get more through ascensions, which is really nice. Um, so each stack of blade heart that you get will summon three swords when you use your swords out ability. The secondary for Tao is called Fatal Bloom. And I'm going to be honest, I've had probably m the most amount of fun using this ability with certain ascensions. You essentially pick an area where you're aiming and you, you cast this ability and it essentially hits with flower petals that explode and mark a bunch of people. Uh, it does 600 damage. The mark lasts for six seconds. And once you hit the enemy 12 times, it deals the damage again. So every 12 times that you hit them, it'll do the damage again, as long as the mark is still on them. Um, so if you're shooting something with a high capacity in the magazine with a fast fire rate you can make that damage trigger multiple times off of one cast uh, but honestly this is an ability that you can kind of just spam like crazy because you you're constantly getting the the pickups to restore your secondary so it actually makes it a lot of fun if you get a couple of uh, certain ascensions on that one so for Tao's talents the first one you can get is blade and heart which is plus 5% damage for swords out for every blade heart stack you have. So essentially at the beginning with the six stacks, you'd be at 30% extra damage uh, for using swords out, which is a pretty nice little chunk. You get galloping speed for each enemy you kill. You get 10% movement speed buff for eight seconds and you can get up to five stacks. This to me is one of my favorite character talents because I always feel so slow when I play this game after playing other stuff. So being able to just almost always have this nice movement speed buff. It's just super, super awesome. The third one's Long Lasting Bloom. So for every five enemies you mark with Fatal Bloom, it restores a use. So this is where I kind of said you can spam this ability. Uh, as long as you're hitting groups of enemies, you'll get the use back, which is really nice. And also they drop all the time to pick them up to get uses back. So. With this mixed with the drops, you get it back so fast that you can almost always just keep spamming it. Uh, the fourth talent, you got Superior Magazine, plus 30% magazine capacity and reload speed. That's just a super nice all-around buff. That's really good for this character based on how I've been using her and how I'm sure a lot of people will end up using her. The fifth one is Resilient Shield. This one to me is super powerful. Uh, recharge your shield immediately after killing an enemy and your shield recharge won't be interrupted for three seconds. So essentially you get a kill and your shield will charge all the way back up without stopping for the next three seconds, which is super, super cool and very, very powerful. 
Okay, so my last hero overview, I went through the ascensions one by one, read them out, and kind of tried to explain what they do a bit more. I don't know that I want to go that deep into it this time. If you want me to, let me know, and I will make a deep dive on the character if you feel like you want me to. Uh, but for now, we're just going to kind of do overviews of the three different trees and uh, kind of what they're what they're for. So starting off first, we got Raging Bloom. This is exactly what it says. Enhances your Fatal Bloom, which is your secondary ability. You have Glowing Bloom, Cursed Mark, Flower Chain, No Escape, Mark Chaser, and Blade of Bloom. Blade of Bloom is probably the one that I've had the most fun with uh, for this build in particular. It is a ton of fun and can do some pretty good damage if you get the right mixes of ascensions on it. The second tree is Mainstay Weapon. This enhances your combat prowess, so this is going to be more based on trying to get your gun damage to do all the work for you. Uh, it's a lot of fun and it's cool because it actually kind of mixes in your abilities to make the damage procs. So that makes it a lot more fun than just simple take this and you get this much more gun damage. Uh, you have Empathy with Sword, Sword Enthusiast, Warlike Blade, Swordsman, Sword Guard, and Ammo Extractor. Then the third and final tree is Blade Rain. Enhances your blade manipulation, which is essentially for your Swords Out primary ability. You have Sword Shadow, Epic Sword Craft, Amplified Sword, Sword Defense, Furious Wave, and Luminous Heart. This one is very, very fun to run if you focus on just using your Swords Out ability. You can kind of get it to a good point where you can just keep spamming that ability and just machine gunning swords everywhere, and that is a lot of fun. So I tried to come up with a couple of uh, builds for each of these individual trees. A little bit of theory crafting, not a whole lot, didn't do a big deep dive into all the numbers and everything, and I haven't fully tested everything, so there's some things that I don't know how they interact with each other. Um, but I did try to come up with some cool builds here. Uh, I did one for the Raging Bloom tree where you'd be using essentially Blade of Bloom, which is gonna make it to where whoever you hit with the mark, it's gonna summon swords out that are gonna pretty much seek them out and attack them. Uh, it deals 100% of your blade heart stacks as far as how many swords come out. I did try using, I believe it was this one, Sword Shadow. Yeah, Sword Shadow, which makes Bladeheart summon additional flying swords. I tried to take this to see if that would essentially double the amount of swords coming out for Blade of Bloom. It does not, so Sword Shadow does not interact with Blade of Bloom. I assume that's intentional, because if you use this build, you'll understand why. Uh, but what did work was Luminous Heart, which increases your base stacks of your Blade Heart and your max stacks. So at level 3 on uh, on Luminous Heart, you start off with 5 stacks of Blade Heart, and you can get up to 8. I believe it actually goes to 9, but either way, it's really, really nice, because then you're getting 9, which makes this summon 9 swords, so you're getting an additional 3, um, which when this is maxed out, dealing 250%. So... You're actually getting quite a few swords coming out of here. Um, the damage on this can be really, really big. I'm still trying to look into if sword, Epic Sword Craft is increasing the damage of the swords summoned by Blade of Bloom. I need to do a bit more testing on that. But from everything I've done using this and stacking up with like Luminous Heart and things like that, it's done really, really well. Um, you can always increase the base damage of Fatal Bloom if you want the initial hit to do more damage, but this is honestly where most of my damage was coming from. I would proc it, and then the swords would essentially just kill whatever I was hitting. For Mainstay Weapon, I was taking Warlike Blade, which is essentially increasing your rate of fire, your accuracy, and a 5% chance to recover ammo. These all increase, obviously, the higher level it is. But essentially, rate of fire, accuracy, and chance to recover ammo for every 10 ammo that you consume. And this can stack up to three times, and it can actually stack to five times at level three. So this is actually really nice, because typically with this character, I like to use things that have 
very high magazine capacity and a good rate of fire. Uh, like the big hippo or the like the gloves, the electric glove or the fire glove. Both very, very good options with this character to get your procs rolling constantly. Especially with that 30% magazine capacity boost you get from your talent. Um, so Warlike Blade to get more accuracy, rate of fire, and ammo back. I was using Swordsman, which is right here. So for every stack of Blade Heart you own, you're getting increased weapon damage and skill damage. If you can mix Luminous Heart in there as well to get the stacks higher, this can make a huge difference uh, difference in your damage and your weapon and your skills. Uh, ammo Extractor, very nice to keep your magazine rolling. Every time you kill somebody marked by Fatal Bloom, you're just returning ammo to the magazine, so it essentially lets you just keep firing without having to reload ever. Um, yeah, typically those, Warlike Blade, Swordsman, Ammo Extractor, and then if you can work in Luminous Heart, those are really all you'll need, and they will just make you do so much damage. Um, obviously a good weapon helps a lot, but those are enough to carry you through, at least on normal. Like I said, I don't do a whole lot on the elite difficulties, I know if some of you mentioned that. This is more just for like theory crafting and fun builds to run. Most of them are viable on elite, it's just that the runs take a lot longer to do, and they're a lot more kind of kitey, so it's not as fun to watch, I think. Um, I just really enjoy having the power of like getting a good build and just becoming super, super powerful in this game in a normal run. It's a lot of fun, and I think it's a lot more enjoyable to watch. So the third build that I ran for the Blade Rain Tree, I was running Sword Shadow, which essentially makes it to where every stack of Blade Heart you have, you'll summon an additional sword uh, when you cast uh, swords out. So that actually adds up to a lot of damage if you get that one maxed out. I have not been able to get that one to level 3 with the other ascensions that I've been wanting for this build. Uh, but I was using this with Epic Swordcraft to increase the base damage. If you can get just these two maxed out together, the damage is insane. Uh, but also if you can add in Luminous Heart, because you're getting more stacks, which is going to equal a lot more swords, which then equals a lot more damage. Those three are the ones you really, really want to look for. If you still are finding other things, Furious Wave is good to add in, as well as Amplified Sword. Furious Wave is nice, because each of the swords that are coming out has a 40% chance to deal double damage, and an additional 20% chance to deal three times the damage if you're hitting somebody that's marked by Fatal Bloom. So, all you do is if you see a big mob, you drop Fatal Bloom, you swords out, and then you're doing just tons and tons of damage if any of this procs. Uh, with Amplified Sword, this is essentially really nice for bosses um, or elites. Essentially, once you hit an enemy with a Flying Sword, they take 4% more damage from Flying Swords within one second, but it can stack. So as long as they're hitting within one second, each time they're getting hit, it's increasing that stack of the damage. So if you're using something like this and you're shooting out like 20 swords, that first one's going to hit in 4% and each one's going to do 4% more damage all the way up through that 20th sword. So that can add up to a ton of damage, especially if you get that max to that 10%. That's a ton of damage. So that's kind of the build I was running for Blade Rain. I had a lot of fun with this one and the Fatal Bloom, especially. Uh, mainstay weapon's fun, but... Any character can be good with the right guns, so this to me doesn't stick out as much for for having fun. I really like to mess around with the abilities and the different ascensions to buff those up. So I really, really do like the feel of this character with the Fatal Bloom and the Blade Manipulation. Um, it is a ton of fun, and the character is actually very strong. Well, that's all I got on this one for the overview for the new hero. I hope you enjoyed this and it kind of helped you out a little bit to understand some stuff about the character. I am super excited to get some good videos out as far as builds go, so keep your eye out because I will be having, hopefully, a video for each of those three different builds, doing a full run through with some footage of the new boss, which is very fun boss to fight and I definitely prefer it over the, the ship for stage three. But, uh, yeah, keep your eyes out, guys. I'm going to have some, some good build videos coming through with the full run-throughs. 
Let me know if there's anything else you want to see or if you want me to do any deeper dives into anything with this character. Uh, I'm excited. Hope you guys are too. Have fun with the new update and I'll see you soon.